Our next talk uh, is an online virtual presentation that really highlights the important role that Antarctica plays in influencing weather and climate in our region, and particularly the flow-on effects that can result from a small change in one location, thereby, thereby causing major disruptions thousands of kilometres away. The presentation is by Professor Dana Bergstrom, and it's called Biodiversity, Extreme Events and Butterfly Wings. Dana is an integrative ecologist who leads AAD's terrestrial biodiversity research in Antarctica and its sub-Antarctic Macquarie Island. Dana collaborates broadly on really big picture questions and last year she was awarded the 2021 Eureka Prize for Leadership and Innovation in Science. Hi, I'm Dana Bergstrom. I'm an integrative ecologist and we focus on a number of things in terrestrial ecological research. Firstly, the fundamental documenting of living values. Our recent major focus has been on the assessment of biodiversity in the Vesterbold Hills. We carry out horizon scanning for threats such as non-native species and aid managers with conservation decision making. And we examine change both in space and time such as here using satellite imagery to map change on World Heritage Heard Island. But today I want to talk about examining change in Antarctica and placing it in context with elsewhere. We've been trying to understand what happened during the first six months of 2022. It's not a resolved story by any means, but gives the flavour of what we and our Bond Sire and University collaborators do. Widespread calamity is how I would describe this year. In March, a heat wave hit Antarctica. Temperatures deep inland rose to 40 degrees above normal, complete with a huge dump of snow. Luckily, temperatures failed to rise above zero. At Casey, we had plus 5.6 degrees. Adelis had left for the sea, but mosses would have been woken up and wet at a time they were preparing to shut down for winter, and pollutants would have been mobilised in the soil. Records broke in February on Macquarie Island with an 18 degree day and the highest rainfall ever recorded for the month. This would provide pressure on the threatened endemic keystone cushion plant, which is under attack from a pathogen. On either side of the Antarctic heat wave, multiple storms and flood events occurred in Australia between Brisbane and Wollongong. Massive multiple flooding occurred in the Mary, Brisbane, Wilson, Richmond, Hawkesbury and the Payne rivers. Drought, however, was reported for southwest Tasmania. Storm surges washed away beaches and flooded coastal areas, such as near Bondo Beach. Flooding resulted in multiple pressures, including fuel spills near an oil refinery in Botany Bay, and coral bleaching was widespread along the Great Barrier Reef. Other observed biological impacts included loss of seagrass, dugongs food in Morton Bay, death in turtles, fish, weedy sea dragons, and temperate corals. On the west coast of New Zealand, there was an extraordinary death of sponges. The impact of short-term extreme events can have long tails, in the past, they have been reported to last for at least a decade. So, how did it happen? We began the year in a La Nina with normal things happening. The Madden-Julian Oscillation moving tropical air west to east. The La Nina warm marine water heat tongue coming south, tropical cyclones and storms in the Indian Ocean and blocking high pressure systems occurring repeatedly south of Australia. But what wasn't normal, the first butterfly wings, was the ocean temperatures, marine heatwave conditions all around the continent of Australia that stretched out to the west coast of New Zealand. We are thinking this energy supercharged the weather systems. The ocean released heat into the atmosphere across the Indian Ocean and the Tasman Sea sectors. Seven tropical storms and five cyclones formed in the, in the ocean, more than normal. One cyclone, Vernon in the Indian Ocean, sent warm, moist tropical air southward it ran into a blocking high below Australia. This created an atmospheric river that funneled heat and moisture deep into Antarctica. Oh, and did I mention a small ice shelf, the Conga, collapsed? This possibly was also linked to the lowest summer sea ice ever. So two more sets of butterfly wings. Blocking highs also sent Tasman Sea moisture northward, combining with east coast lows, again creating atmospheric rivers, this time flooding the east coast of Australia. And the East Australian current delivered tropical waters along the coast two degrees above normal. And the last kicker butterfly wings was in the tropics. 
The Madden-Julian oscillation oscillates through eight phases. In February, it didn't get much past phase two, Many moisture that cools the northern parts of Queensland during La Nina didn't arrive, and this contributed to the coral bleaching of the Great Barrier Reef. Bom colleagues think this has to do with the Tongan volcano sediments in the atmosphere. So a taste of the very complicated jigsaw puzzle of weather observation that we hopefully are turning into climate and ecological knowledge. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge the 80 plus colleagues all over the globe who are part of these investigations.